Hey, Max, thanks for uh, being on the show, man. Um, what, what have you been up to these days? Yeah, it's really great to be here. Um, well, you know, the industry has really changed a lot. And then we we got this, um, the uh, COVID came through and really decimated a lot of uh, businesses everything. and people. And everybody suffered, everybody suffered on that, or nearly everybody. So um, we okay. haven't been shooting as much, a little bit. Um, it's hard to coordinate now. You got to be tested and for the COVID and, of course, all the rest of the stuff. Yeah, that now we are it's tested like for. they're just piling it on. So I've been just part, I just been rock and rolling all day and partying every night, basically. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, it's, it's good to hear you're still, uh, you've still been producing uh, some uh, new material, uh, new content the past few years. Yeah, yeah, you got got to. I mean, uh, I'm a creator, and I got to create. You know, I'm, I'm not happy, and I'm I'm a real go getter. I move, move, move it, and um, I make things happen. You know, there's uh, two kinds of people. There's some people that make things happen, and there's other people that watch things happen, and I make things happen. You definitely and are get it done. And- in the former category. So Max, you know, yeah. you, you got a very divided reputation. You're a very interesting character. You know, depending on one's perspective, some people think you're a champion of free speech. Whereas on the other hand, some people think you're one of the most reviled men in the porn industry. So, and, and people have said horrible things about you, called you like a misogynist, or, you know, a child molester, but then other people, you know, say you're a visionary. So how do you respond to, to that? Like, what are your thoughts on, like, the varied opinions of your character? Sure. Well, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, and, but it, like any business, if you hang around long enough and um, you, you, you manage to get through without killing anybody, uh, you're... <laughs> more or less accepted in um so i'm doing what i started out with i had a vision and i wanted to make porn the way i wanted to make it i didn't want to champion free speech or anything like that i just wanted to make movies so uh i had some different ideas that uh that separated me from the rest. And one was that we dominate, uh, get in there, we dominate and destroy. And, uh, you know, film it from a man's perspective, uh, you know, and my character is selfish yeah. and and he gets what he wants or he gets out of the, the situation. And I really enjoyed making this, but, uh, the some people took uh, offense to it, and even early on, back in the mid nineties, that's what surprises Portland, me. Is that yeah. someone in the in the mid nineties people are taking offense? I can understand now with like cancel culture, Me Too, and things like that, that people would be completely yeah. shocked or appalled by what what you what you're doing, your you know your videos. But in the nineties, I'm surprised people would be that upset. Well, you know, I kind of remember back then and, and people, they, a lot of people had gone to jail before that um, for various reasons, you know, uh, Larry Flint uh, oh, yeah, from yeah. Hustler Magazine. Now, he, he this that was, was the a 80s, champion though. of free yeah, right. Yeah. So, but it's leading up and, and, and spilling into the 90s and, but he, he got, it's a complicated issue, but he didn't want to be a champion. He just wanted to make money, and and Maybe. and uh, it just it came. It was forced upon him, and it was forced upon me when I was um, I I was going against the grain. In that uh, I made strong videos. I did things that uh, people di- didn't do. Um, you, you know, before that, you Pushing have to boundaries. understand it was just, they were, yeah, well, they were, but what boundaries, you know, to define it, uh, you know, this, the stories were don't, the guy don't talk, you, you know, you just get in there and, and, and there's a, there's a 
scenario leading up to it, and then they make a scene, and there's just moans and groans. And, and I like to carry this, my stories through into the sex and through the sex scenes and, um, you know, say things that I knew would touch uh, press the hot buttons to some people like, you know, you're, I would say to the <laughs> girl, you know, you're just a stupid little whore and this is your job and this is what you do. So shut the fuck up and, and get to work. And, uh, but, I mean, people weren't people, saying though, people weren't, 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 there wasn't no. dialogue like that in uh in, in guys, yeah there them. never no, had been in porn before and especially what i like about like your style of like gonzo porn was that it was more like <laughs> real life sex yeah. as opposed to the big productions yeah. like what the mitchell brothers had started doing i mean that has its place but definitely i would say that you know not including like the gaping assholes i'm pretty sure a lot of people don't have gaping asshole sex <laughs> every weekend but gonzo porn like what you create to me is more like what regular people having sex well, is like. It's like a reality show, in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't know what people are doing, but uh, it caught on. Uh, but it did alienate some people. And uh, I just said, let's, let's just make it ridiculously outrageous. And, you know, and then it got to the point where I said, well, I, I want to, I, I want to uh, be controversial and so forth, and and uh, right on. and I enjoy it. I mean, I gotta say, you developed a reputation. You know, I mean, just some of the sexual situations depicted in your films include like urination, fisting, speculum yeah. play, anal vag gaping, vomiting. You know, uh, girls vomiting on each yeah. other, drinking urine from their anuses. You know, I don't think anyone was doing this at that time. But um, so I can, I can understand how no, some people's no, minds were blown no, a bit. No, people still aren't doing that. I mean, there's a couple. <laughs> of that. No sane man would would do that. Although, um, well, describe a typical cutting. scene. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. a typical Max well, hardcore scene? Okay. Well, the idea being that. Um, I'm selling the idea when it comes right down to it, basically that uh, a guy, average looking guy can meet a girl uh, in any of a number of situations, you know, like on the beach, at the grocery store, at the park. um, And we would put it on location. So that would make it more realistic and do the, what we call the pickup. And uh, you would, uh, we would do the pickup, and then a lot of times we'd shoot right then and there, right in the in the bathroom, and uh, of a public park, and that was sufficiently um, uh, dirty and nasty and and animalistic, and uh, and the hell of a lot of fun, you know. And the, plus, the idea was that uh, at any second somebody could walk in there and. And the gig would be up, but um, fortunately, uh, uh, it never happened um, because of our pre-planning. Yeah, like, how do you book the girls? Do you just, do you say, like, straight from the off, like, you're going to be drinking the piss out of another girl's ass today? Or is it a case of, like, the money goes up and up and up for them? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I would do, uh, you know, they say a picture tells a thousand words. So I started out with a um, a board that had uh, 16 Polaroid pictures on it. If you remember the Instamatic, uh, you know, Polaroids. Yeah, yeah. Polaroid and it would, it, we'd, I'd walk the girl through the scene. Um, and then we started making trailers um we didn't use trailers back on the VHS days because there was no, you know, we had no way to market them or right. place them. So, um, but once the internet came along, we got, we got on board with that and then we started making trailers. So I'll show a girl trailers and I'll ask them if they're completely comfortable with it. And it would be brand new to most of them. Um, because uh, I often use actresses that are 
relatively new to the business so that it seems more realistic that they are, you know, a real person rather than just a girl doing her, uh, her 500th scene. Right. Well, a lot of these girls um, are really young, too. Aren't they very young, very petite? Well, yeah. Well, uh, part of that was yeah, young, young looking. So the innocent factor. And yeah, you do makes, have like course, a little doll type. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it would make it. It would make it more, uh, more shocking, more eye opening, yeah, more um, controversial. But the, the the tiny the tiny little girls that we use, you know, between eighty and ninety pounds, uh, sometimes. Um, that uh, was just a matter of mechanics because it's easy, easier to lift lift up a girl and fuck her in midair like you're holding her, um, and she's facing away. Your my front is to her back, and I'm lifting her up and got her legs open, and 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 it's really a dynamic shot. Um, it's like a reverse cowgirl shot, except yeah. I'm standing and instead of lay, sitting down or laying down. And um, yeah, I guess that'd be easier so, to do with a 90 pound girl than like a 180 pound. Well, girl. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you know, I, I, I have nothing against them, but you, you just can't do that with 130 <laughs> pounds, you know, not for long. You can't No damn. And also, uh, I, you know, you, you have to understand the limitations of, the, uh, the the camera the camera has to be able to see the point of impact and and the, if a girl is very heavy and fleshy uh, it takes a longer and longer progressively uh, longer uh, tool to get in there and and to see what the hell's going on well you got to get a so wide angle the lens the, <laughs> yeah the the, and you really have to have it right on top of the action. So the best thing to do is just get a girl who's small. And that solves a lot of issues right then and there as far as what the customer, what the audience wants to see. Well, and, one uh, thing, Max, you took it one step further because a lot of these girls who are already petite and, you know, 90 pounds. But then you have them wearing pigtails and sucking on the lollipop with their hair in a scrunchie or uh, braces. Right. right. So, <laughs> was that your idea? Was that, is that does that appeal to the demographic? No, 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 no. It was strictly my uh, my plan. You know, uh, that's right according to the plan because it's more eye opening. I mean, if you see a girl who looks like she's um, 14 years old and she's taken up the ass and having a good time. Um, and that's great. I mean, uh, that's really sh as far, far yeah, it's as shocking from a shocking sense. And you can't do it. We see, you know, the thing about movie making that people don't understand is that some people don't understand that are against the porn industry is it shows things that you can't do in real life. You're not going to meet a, 12 year old on the street and be fucking her in a, a filthy bathroom at the pu at a public park. Okay. It's just not going to happen, yeah. but it can happen with the magic of cinema. And then it makes it more shocking. Like, wow, what the hell, how old is that girl? When people saw Barbie Angel, little Cinderella, um, Chloe Adams, Catalina, et cetera, et cetera. They, they thought uh, that the girls were underage when in fact, of course they're not, uh, not even close. Um, and everybody's really checked out thoroughly and we have record keeping um, uh, requirements that would be 2257 uh, record keeping requirements uh, mandated by the government. So, uh, so you can prove their it's age. It's not ever going to happen. Yeah. So when right. you're so when you're going that through that the scene, that didn't stop them coming for you, did well, it? No. But when <laughs> yeah. you're going through the scene and you're taking them through the Polaroids, um, do you like? Are there sex acts that require additional discussion? Like, do the girls ever say like, "There's no way I'm going to, you know, let you vomit into my asshole" or something? Like, do well, girls ever? I, I don't step I, away I have from the it? other girl. What, you know, the other girl would do it, but here's, here's, I say, 
I tell them uh, there's little tricks that we use. Okay. Um, for the most part, um, if, uh, if a girl's going to pee or if I'm going to pee into the mouth of a girl and she's going to swallow it, I don't expect her to, to drink rancid, nasty, yellow piss. Okay. So, and it's very simple to work around. I start well before the scene drinking a bunch of water. You get to the point in about after about the third bottle of water where it's completely clear and tasteless and odorless. So um, I explain that to the girl and she'll say, mm, you know, and then we test it out and she'll say, yeah, um, it, that's not bad at all. So it's essentially water. The only point. objection. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what she's doing. So the only thing that uh, she could uh, complain about was being portrayed as drinking piss. Okay, so, but they get over that, you know, because they're making a lot of money. Um, well, do they have consent forms? Like, do you have a pre-scene consent form? Yes. Where they, like, check off, like, what they're willing to do? Yeah, exactly. It's a checkoff form, right, Um Precisely, and so um, let's see here. Uh, I'm not even have one around. Uh, well, I mean, I it sounds like, handy. but it sounds like you you okay. wrote one of those be, from experience. Like, uh, do, I mean, do, have you ever dealt with a girl that was like, "There's no way I'm going to do that," and then that led you, based on that experience, to come up with a checklist? Yeah. No. Well, no. I I did the. Uh, I do, do, we do an interview ahead of time, and then we do a, a, a final uh, checklist. Did you do anything that you didn't want to do? Do you agree to, um, that we are going to, dist that we own this material and we're going to distribute it in any way, shape, or form that uh, we determine into the future, into perpetuity? It's a standard document. Uh, we just add a few things where the sex is uh, is highlighted, and uh, then we make uh, make sure that they're they're comfortable with it. And once the girls do it, I me mean, to myself, the best scenes are the ones where the girl is really having a good time, and she's and she's it. smiling, and she's she's not she's not a victim; she's an accomplice at that point. Okay, <laughs> and it's a good way to put it. We, yeah, and, and then that that that's what really makes a hot scene. It's and it's more palatable to a larger amount of the audience. I mean, if you're just in there beating the shit out of somebody, uh, it's not very interesting for very long, in my opinion. However, I agree. That being said, I, that being said. There were instances where we're in deep to the scene and the girl uh, is just not cooperating and, and it's, we're, we're losing the patient, doctor. And, and in which case, we just try to finish up so that we have a complete scene. Well, how do you turn it around? I, I, I try to turn it around, but a lot of times, like... Um, they just, well, let me put it to you this way. And it's hard for some people, uh, normal civilians to imagine, but there are a certain amount of people in, in our society that like to put, like being a victim. And, uh, and you can see this when you watch bondage movies, they're tied up. I, and I don't do bondage per se. I might use simple things like the jaw openers and stuff like that. And the, then speculums. the speculums, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah. They, but um, they really like, well, that's their fetish. They, they get into it. Yeah. And they, they get into it and they like, they like being dominated and they like, you know, like uh playing that role that's they're very they slip into that and once they slid into that role that mindset it's it's difficult to turn that ship around um it, you can do it but it, it's a it's a it's a long arc and it takes you 
some time and a lot of muscle and in my opinion way too much discussion to to, to make it worthwhile it's better that we settle with a shorter scene if a girl is not if we're not getting the the, the correct responses from the girl you know the happiness yeah. I, what do you I mean if she's a victim cuz in some of your scenes yeah, there's like she, a lot of cock gagging there's a lot of tears and then, not to mention, there's like yeah. the whole humiliation aspect. Because I, I, I saw in a in a scene there, you had the girl looking at the camera, saying to her mom, "Like, how do you like me now, mom? I'm a real, uh, yeah, you know, I'm well, a real yeah. model. Are you you proud of your little calm. princess now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I can understand how some people <laughs> might see that and take it the wrong way. But are you saying that the girl that's doing this, she's having fun with that? She's getting off on being humiliated like that? Mostly, yeah, for the most part. I, I, I'll admit, though, that there's some girls that just wouldn't want to do the scene again. You know, they did it once, and that's that's it. It's a very small percentage, but there there is that percentage, and um, uh, and I do my best. I really. I started out at the beginning of the day with this, and I, I always, I often say that the word for today is happiness. Okay, we're not happy until you're happy. Um, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna craft this thing that it's not offensive to you, that you enjoy what you're doing, and you make it. You're just a little dirty whore, and. If nothing else, that seems to ring true with a lot of girls. They wouldn't be in the business. They like being dirty little whores, and and it works out pretty good. However, there are some that I've pissed off. Brianna Banks, even though she came back. Um, and, but why, why was she uh, pissed off? Older. Like if, if you went through the scenes beforehand, got her to sign the checklist afterwards, did she say she was abused? No, you know, like... <laughs> You know, okay, I, I talk to them, I, and sometimes I'm, I really feel like I talk too much to the girls, and I attempt <laughs> to explain, some great, but maybe it's some great language it's going too on. overwhelming. <laughs> well, before the scene, I talk to, the, like, this is what we're going to do, you know, and so you let's have some fun with it, okay? You're going to drink piss, and it doesn't taste bad. And, you know, they might start out with the attitude like that's really gross, but once they try it, it's not bad. But some get it in their head. And I'll tell you a perfect example of that. It was Anita Blue. And Anita, who I'm good friends with, uh, said to me, she, she starts shaking when I'm peeing in her mouth and she's crying and shaking. And she says, I... I I, I I can't I just can't wrap my mind around this. I well, and I said you don't dramatic. have to wrap your mind around it. You just have to act like okay if 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 it's the and this is a like a private joke that from one scene that we did if if it's hippies with oranges in the backseat of the VW microbus. Put it, leave it by the door, okay? This, this is not a hippie crash pad. This is the real deal here, and we make movies, and you have to, you're playing a part. You're not playing yourself, yeah. okay? Maybe you are playing yourself, but if not, then you're pretending, and that's what movie making is all about. It's pretending that you're doing something that you're not, uh, that you. But I mean, I, I could see that with a girl who's experienced, but a lot of these girls, you know, it's their, what, you know, they're 19, 20 years old, brand new in the industry. I mean, maybe yeah, but they're maybe being paid. Break, they're being paid, but maybe they weren't expecting what they're going to get into. You know, I mean, it's no, no, they don't. And like I say, thank it. Thankfully, it's a very small percentage of, of the girls I, in, in, uh, uh, 30 years of movie making, uh, I've only lost two patients. Um, wow, that's, that's girls that just couldn't finish, could, they couldn't finish the scene. And uh, they said, I can't go, I can't continue. 
That so is a good start. We, we, uh, it's it, damn good because I've got over 2,000 movies to you my <laughs> uh, credit. Wow, and only two girls who walked away from it. So you've, you've, you've done yeah, quite like a few... I, well, that's the thing. You've done right. your, you know, your, your, your push boundaries, your groundbreaking. Um, you're definitely doing something, obviously, you know, a lot of people might not be into it. But let's talk about what happened with the obscenity trial. So why do you think oh, okay. when you had people like, you know, Stagliano, Evil Angel, uh, you know, Seymour Butts, um, Jeff Seward, all these people who are targeted for obscenity but never charged. They plea bargain to being like a public nuisance, but you actually got, you know, you had to do real time, like two years. Why do you think they came after you? Because I had shitty lawyers. <laughs> I was about to say, was it, it, to? was it a money issue? <laughs> yeah, was it just basically money? They took no, all listen, your fucking money. Listen, I tell them the same thing, okay? I had some of the industry best lawyers, right? Um, and, I, and, um, uh, these guys, they knew their shit. So I said, what about fighting it? He says, yeah, let's get in there and let's, let's fight these charges. Let me tell you something. Okay. That applies to all, uh, every single time the feds come after you, you, you take the deal. Okay. You take the fucking deal. And anybody who doesn't know that is a fucking idiot. And but I'm listening to my lawyers. They say let's fight, and I want to fight. You know, I think what I'm doing is right. But you can't fight the federal government. They got well, Larry all Flint the money. You got no money. Okay, so what happened leading up to this was they they had a uh, a commission in the early uh, O's, uh, and you know there was a lot of a lot of people pissed off about a lot of things because the World Trade Center had got uh, got taken down and then the planes Patriot crashed Act, and a lot of, of people were understandably really pissed off with the whole world. So the government, my this is just my theory. I don't know if it's correct, but uh, what I think is that they said, well, we have to have something. The government. Uh, their policymaker says, let's uh, make, uh, let's give them something else that makes them look like we're doing good for society. And of course they, they round up the usual suspects. I am a usual suspect. And I was making a lot more money at the time uh, because we didn't have all the independent uh, OnlyFans uh, yeah, you type didn't have sites like, and, and the tube sites and like Pornhub and no. all that. It was all DVD yeah, sales, and tubes, right? Yeah, and then we stole all our stuff. And so um, anyway, uh, so they formed a commission. It was called the Meese Commission, M E E S E Commission, mm-hmm. and it was the anti-porn commission. And what they did was they said, "How are we going to?" attack porn what's our what's our angle of attack because they considered it to be a war um uh, of morality and also to show i don't know how much they really cared about the morality uh, but they did care about the money and they did care about looking good okay so they went uh they went and did uh, a lot of investigations. I was one, John Staliano, Jeff Mike, um, Rob Black, and uh, one or two other fellas. Uh, not Seymour Butts, though. I don't think he was involved in any way. Um, they went. They went after us. Uh, the four I had mentioned, and all Jeff Mike got off. On a technicality, uh, John Saliano got off on a technicality, and they ne- they never refiled the charges. And they w- but they did get a con- conviction with uh, Rob Black from Extreme Associates, and they they got a conviction from me because I fought the charge. What was the conviction though? Like, what were the charges? Right. Okay. So, what the government did was they ordered from 
a distributor, not from me directly, but from a distributor, uh, 10 of my movies. We would typically, we didn't sell to uh, individuals. That was for distributors. That was the accepted way of doing business. And, uh, and they, um, they, they, this J, J, uh, J, 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 M, J Mark, uh, I forget it right offhand. Anyway, the distributor sent, his name was Jay, but I can't remember the company. So wait, the FBI uh, went anyway, undercover, got, got the, ordered the, uh, the movies no, from the distributor? They just ordered 10 videos and had them out of Florida and had them sent to a post office box. Okay. You United States post office box and anybody knows, everybody knows you don't ship to a post office box. Okay. Now you gotta be some kind of idiot because the post office is connected with the government. So that's, if they want to bust you, they're going to, yeah, they could sent. use that, yeah. But I sent it to the distributor. The, the distributor then sent it to um, the post office box. And through some strange twist of logic, they bust me for shipping 10 videos to this post office box in Tampa. But showing uh, your typical content, right? Like fisting, urination, vomiting, all that. Yeah, all the yeah, and the Euro, what we call the European versions too. And <laughs> What's the, European the difference in the European versions? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they, 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 those are the ones that had the peeing and the fist fucking in it. That's yeah, the Europeans love the that. Right well, there. yeah, Max, that's what we're all up to yeah. in Europe. That's that's my plans for tonight. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, the. The, instead of busting the distributor, they busted me. And we even called the distributor in the trial because we said, we're going to fight this. Oh, God damn, if I had that all that money. Oh, it you had was him such a two hung juries as well, didn't you? Before you even got it convicted. Was, yeah. So they charged me with 10 counts of shipping obscene matter. Okay. So I was, that's what I was on trial for. And you got 46 months. Yeah, I was convicted of the 10 counts of, of shipping obscene matter. And um, they had a, a, an opportunity to give me over 14 years Whoa. in prison wow. for that. Yeah, that, that was the option. But uh, the judge found it uh, that it warranted a a uh, sentence of 46 months. Okay. And I was sentenced to uh, what's called a low security uh, prison. Like a minimum right. security and, prison. Uh, in the fed yeah. In the federal system, just briefly, the federal system has camps, which don't have a fence. They have a low, which I was in and basically white collar crimes or guys that were coming down out of the higher prisons, the mediums, and the penitentiaries, they were coming down. Like if you would get 20 years for killing a guy, right? And you would serve like 15 years in a pen, and then you'd go to a medium and serve another two years, and then you'd come to a low, and from a low you would get released. And you're just on your best behavior at that point. Because at that point they, they don't want to yeah, fuck yeah. up because they're going to go back to like the, you know, a minimum or a, a no, know, it was, no, listen, it was a, it was just a card playing party. I, it was not bad. It I was, was about to say, what, what was the food like? Tell I, I, I'm always interested in prison food. In where I was in Latuna federal FCI, which is a federal correctional institute. I, uh, was was not bad. I mean, everybody just wants to get along. Almost no fights. Um, did you have any fans? Uh, um, like anyone recognize any you? Any what? Did it, did anyone recognize oh, you? Yeah, like, yeah, holy yeah. shit, they it's all, Max Hardcore. Every, every, listen, everybody knows your business. Even if they didn't recognize <laughs> me, they know that's the guy that that's the pornographer. And so yeah, I was in with girls. the yeah. crowd. So you you served thirty months. What, yeah, what'd you do when you got out? I just kept my mouth shut and uh, and did my job. 
And so I got out. Now, the way it works is uh, you go to um, from a low or usually a low or a camp, and then you go to a halfway house. Halfway oh, house okay. is just like a low or or more like a camp. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're in little houses. I, I was in Silver Lake. Um, like can, can you come and go as you please, but you have a curfew? No, 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 not at all. No, no, no. You got to have a job. So you got to, you got to find, get a job. Okay. So you got go out every day to get a job and, and then you got to be back by dinner time. Okay. I came back and I told the, my counselor there that, uh, you know, I'm going back into the business and I'm going to do things a little differently. And, but, uh, it's a legal business and you know, a lot of people doing it. And she says, okay, just, don't do whatever you did before. Don't do that again. I just said, believe me. I, so did you get I back won't. to your old gig? Like, were you able to get back into producing uh, porn again? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm making stuff today. Uh, my website is max-hardcore.com. So, so, Max, real quick. You said that you prepare yourself yes. for a piss scene by drinking a lot of water. How do the girls, like, what do the girls do? What do they eat to, right. to prepare for a barf scene, like a no, vomit same. scene? Same thing. Oh, they just drink they just a lot drink of water. Lot. So they're so what they're barfing up isn't food. It's just it's water. Well, yeah, for the most part. But there has been some accidental uh, <laughs> discharges that uh, that I would have personally preferred to avoid. But um, <laughs> well, it happens. The, uh, well, with it the gaping the ass, of us. like yeah. I mean, <laughs> like if you're going to be gaping, how do you prepare yourself for a gaping scene? Do you just not eat for like three days? Well, oh, the girl, uh, yeah, okay, real simple. The girls use uh, enemas. Yeah. And uh, and they're, everybody has their own technique, but uh, enema plus rinse it out with water. It's as clean as, as as can be. You know, it's as clean as licking a pussy. You know, it's no big deal. Clean as the sole in a yeah. cripple's boot. <laughs> hey Max, yeah. uh, it's been great talking to you, man. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. And I, thank I want you. people to go check oh, out thanks. Max's site at uh, max-hardcore.com. You can also find uh, Max on Twitter at twitter.com/maxhardcore100. Um, you're also on Facebook too, right? Yeah. Facebook.com/maxhardcore100. Yes, I am. All right. Well, Max, it's it's been great hanging out with you, man. And uh, yeah, wish you best of luck in the future. Yeah, thank take, you. Take it sleep. Love you. Thank you. <laughs>